Welcome into the money line. It's a Friday. It's six o'clock. It is the money line here on ESPN 1025 the game and the game Nashville app and YouTube. Ryan Porth, Chase McCabe here with you on yet another Friday evening, talking all things sports betting, going into a big football weekend, not only here locally, but around the country. Chaser, how are we doing this evening? Hanging in there, Ryan. Uh, good to be here and talking a little sports betting. Let's uh, make some money. Let, let's uh, let's make a lot of money, m- money, not just some. Money. Let's, make, let, let's make a lot of money. Uh, so we've got a lot to get to. We've got Colts Titans this weekend. We've got Tennessee, Florida this weekend. We've got a lot of intriguing games, both on the college slate and the NFL slate. I feel like this is going to be a really fun football weekend, not only if – you're into sports betting, but I just think as a whole, this is going to be a great weekend to sit back and enjoy a lot of football. But before we get to that, Chase, this is the first time that we have been on the air since last weekend. And last weekend, you lost your father to cancer. And I wanted to extend my condolences uh, here publicly on the radio to you and your family. Um, Obviously a a very sad time last weekend and still is, you know, without, uh, without your dad. So wanted to, to say that to you and, um, you know, hope, hope you guys and, and your whole family has been able to, to hang in there this week. Well, I appreciate it. Um, he, uh, he always talked very fondly of you cause, uh, <laughs> you would talk about Cincinnati and he was, um, you know, before he passed was wanting some skyline chili. So, oh wow. um, so yeah, I appreciate it. It's been a rough week. I mean, you know, as I, I said, when I came back on Darren Donick and chase on Wednesday, I kind of had to come to terms with the fact of it's okay to not be okay. And, um, that is, that's what I've been. So, um, you know, I have been, I, I changed it up on, you just made the list today. I made it a good list and I appreciate you and your wife, Amanda, for your friendship and checking on me every day. And, you know, I'll get through it. Cause that's what he'd want. He wouldn't want me sitting around crying over him. So yep. that's well, uh, what we're going to do. Well, we're all here for you uh, through this difficult time for you. So, um, and in the spirit of that, you texted me Sunday night, hmm. a parlay that you had done Saturday night, late Saturday night. Yep. And I, I kind of wish you would have shared this with me beforehand, but uh, nevertheless, you hit the dad parlay on Sunday, which I'll let you tell the story, but very, very cool. So my dad growing up, when he was growing up, he was a big Oakland Raiders fan. Um, He loved John Madden. He hated Al Davis, but he loved John (laughs) Madden, loved Ken Stabler, Jack Tatum, you know, all those guys from the, you know, he used to joke that the uh, defensive line would get out on work release. That's how, (laughs) you know, just dangerous they were. So I decided, all right. Well, I'll take the Raiders and I'll put them in there. Um, they were a dog. And so I, I took them on the money line at Pittsburgh at Pittsburgh. Of course, my team growing up before the, the Titans got here was the Dallas Cowboys and still love the Dallas Cowboys. His dad, my grandfather that I never had the chance to meet. He was uh, gone before I got around, but, um, he loved the Cowboys because he loved Tom Landry and Roger Staubach and dad even liked Staubach some. So uh, I was like, all right, well, there you go. And then of course we both loved the Titans and um, you know, living here and when I, I will never forget the NFL yes sign that he had in his yard uh, for getting them here. So I was like, all right, they're all underdogs, but they're all going to win. And so I took them all on the money line and Uh, walked away with about $1,200, um, when Randy Bullock. So, well, let me, let me go back. The Raiders pretty much, you know, the the Raiders felt like they had it, you know, most of the way they they played a a solid game. Derek Carr even got banged up, but, um, they took care of business. And so going into the the three o'clock window, the Titans and the Cowboys were playing at the same time. So I went to, to a, a sports bar because I wanted to watch both. And was they had the two screens side by side. So I'm watching that game and it's back and forth. I felt, felt good about the Cowboys. And then obviously not that great in the first half about the Titans. And um, Greg, the leg knocks a 56 yarder through to seal it for the Cowboys. 
um, that they, you know, cause they were tied looking like they could go to overtime. So that seals it. And then um, you go to the Titans and the Titans are an OT when, when the Cowboys won, I was like, I'm not cashing out. I'm just curious of what the cash out would be. And my friend Ricky grabs my heart, my arm and my phone and says, <laughs> you're not looking like I'm not letting you look. We're going to ride this out and you're going to hit this. And so, you know, Titans win the toss. I'm like, all right, I'm feeling good, you know, and I, and I had already gotten kind of emotional because it was hitting me like this is the first Titans game without him. And um, I had his hat and a beer that I left open and, and untouched that was, you know, his. And, and so it was kind of starting to get a little difficult. And um, cause I would always call after the Cowboys one and go, how about them Cowboys? You know? Mm -hmm. So, um, so when the Titans got it and uh, I'm thinking, all right, maybe they got a chance here and then Seattle gets a chance and they get the ball back. I'm like, they're, they're going to win. They got this. They're going to win this game. And they were all, you know, they were right there in field goal range. And my friends are like, Hey, um, you know, just line it up and kick the field goal. I go, no, here <laughs> down my face. I'm like, give the ball to Derek. Just keep giving the ball to Derek. Vrabel, give the ball to Derek. And you know, it set it up. And then I'm like, Randy, <laughs> and, and I'm saying, I'm also saying, Brett, hold it straight, Brett. I need you. I need you to not fumble the snap. Um, and, and, uh, and it all worked out. So it was awesome. And, you know, the Titans were sweet enough to, to tweet that was for dad. And, um, and so that was, that was really cool. It was awesome. Well, it, uh, it was good that a Titans kicker actually came through for once. I know. Uh, in, in multiple ways. So the Titans get the, the big win over the Seahawks. Um, so that, that's really cool, man. I, I, I might even tail the dad parlay with Cowboys, Raiders and Titans on Sunday. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how I do tomorrow. I think, a lot of what I do Sunday depends on how I do uh, on the college front tomorrow. But, um, you know, I hit an underdog parlay as well. Okay. Yeah. Tell us that. So I went to bed Saturday night thinking that it was possible. And I've been doing this each of the, the first few weeks of the season because the underdogs this year, in, in your words, the dogs are barking. Oh yeah. Underdogs, the underdogs this year are coming awfully close to pulling upsets. So I put five in a parlay and all five hit and it was $1 to win $215, which then led me to ask myself, why didn't I put just like five bucks on it? Then it could have been a grand. Um, but Memphis, Michigan state, Oklahoma state, BYU, and then Fresno in the final seconds against UCLA, uh, all winning on the money line. So nailed that parlay. Uh, so it was a good weekend for the parlays for, uh, for the two of us. Yeah. Um, so that was one of the biggest parlays that I've hit. So that was a lot of fun to wake up to on Sunday morning, seeing that Fresno had beaten, uh, the Bruins. So I've got, I'm going I had to, Fresno, I had Fresno, uh, the line, I had the line. See the, the books. I feel like disrespected Fresno last week. Fresno yeah. state is a good team. They have a good quarterback. They have a good offense. And uh, they were able to go in there to UCLA and upset them. Um, so I've got a parlay this week. I'm going to see, I'm going to roll the dice again, especially since I hit it last week, and let's see what happens. So here are the five dogs that I'm rolling with on my underdog parlay this week. And the other thing that I do with this is put them in around Robin, so that oh, interesting. If three of them hit, I at least get something out of it, and not all or nothing. So I do a round Robin in addition to the parlay. Um, so really last week that parlay plus the round Robin got me like two sixty. Anyway, um, the five dogs this week, Notre Dame against Wisconsin, Arkansas against Texas A&M, Kansas state against Oklahoma state, Western Kentucky oh. at home against Indiana. And then UAB on the road at Tulane. Okay. I'm rolling with those five. I'm putting them in a parlay, putting them in a round robin. On DraftKings, it was five bucks to win, I believe, 1200 so, I like so, that. We'll see. I like that. I mean, I, you know what? I might tail that. And by okay. my, I mean, I will. Okay. All right. So I hope you're taking notes. Um, so last night, before we get to Titans Colts, 
last night, did you, I, I know you were out doing wrestling trivia, <sighs> but were you aware of what was going on in the Panthers Texans game and how it related to Caesar Sportsbook? Uh, no, but I, so, I mean, I was keeping up with the game, but no, I didn't know that. So Caesar Sportsbook had their super boost which was Christian McCaffrey over 99 and a half rushing plus receiving yards. Oh. And their super boost was plus 100 max $25 bet. I obliged at the max and uh, Christian McCaffrey pulls his hamstring early in the game. And it looked like he was on his way to a big game and then poof, he's done. And uh, Caesars refunded the $25 super boost for anyone who took it interesting with a free bet of the same value so uh i know DraftKings and FanDuel have done things like that caesars has typically not done stuff like that so i was in i was interested to see caesars uh reward the people like that so so i real 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 quick along these lines you know you everybody saw the guy that did the 16 game 16 team parlay uh, with yep. BetMGM on a free bet. Yep. BetMGM, you know, he couldn't cash out. He hit 15 of 16. He had the, all he needed was the Lions over $700,000, <laughs> but he couldn't cash out because it was a free bet. BetMGM offered him like 133000 as a cash out and he, and he took it, um, you know, off the free bet, which turned Smart. out to be the right, the right move because we all know the Lions didn't win. My thing on that is I, I know why they did it. It's a great look, good PR move for, for BetMGM. Same goes for Caesars. Same goes for DraftKings. They do it because they're trying to expand all these states that are making this legal. Like, I, I totally understand it. But I also, like, when somebody asks my opinion on it, should they do it? I say, a Vegas sportsbook's not doing that. Like, you know, so you have to understand that you're not going to get that everywhere. Like if you're just sitting at the casino in the book, like they're not going to do that. It, it sucks. It's unfortunate. Now, you know, they don't do a lot of the boosts and stuff that you see either, but it, you know, McCaffrey goes down. It's like, well, that stinks, but, yep. but it's the same time. Like I, I do think it's, you know, it's cool. It's a good look to, to do things like that. Well, and they didn't do it for the normal prop bets for McCaffrey. They yeah. did it with the super boost, which they right. designed to be almost a layup, not quite a layup, but almost a layup to, uh, to win some money. Um, so I think that's why they did that. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure that's why they did that. Yeah. Um, we're going to get to cash or trash, but Colts Titans on Sunday, the Titans are four and a half point favorites on in FanDuel. They're five and a half point favorites on Caesars. So it's been jumping back and forth between four and a half, five and five and a half, all because of the Colts injury situation with Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz practice today. He was limited. He's going to be a game time decision Sunday morning here in Tennessee as the Colts are Owen to taking on the one and one Titans. I will be very interested chase to see what that line does. If Wentz is ruled out at 10 30 and if it moves yeah. closer to six or maybe even seven. Well, if you play our pick six competition, we, um, Darren set it at six and a half. So, um, yeah, five and a half on bet MGM right now. If you, if you really like the Titans, um, I'd go ahead and jump on it because it's a lower number. That number, if, if Wentz is ruled out, that number is going to go up. Now I think the Titans are going to win no matter what. Um, they're not, they're not going to have two stinkers in a row at home. Um, I just don't see that happening. And I think they got a lot of juice, a lot of pep in their step after their win last week. But that line's definitely going to move some if if Wentz is ruled out. So uh, he practiced today. I think you saw it dip to, like you said, four and a half um, because of that news. But it's going to go the other direction if he's officially ruled out. So one prop that I like, especially, well, either way, if Carson Wentz starts, I don't, I don't think he's going to be overly comfortable in the pocket. If Jacob Eason starts or Brent Hudley starts, if Wentz can't go, then they're going to be trying to find reliable options that aren't necessarily down the field because mm -hmm. both quarterbacks aren't very good. So here's a prop that I really like in this game. 
Naheem Hines over three and a half receptions. And you can get that at plus odds on both uh, DraftKings and Caesars right now. Hmm. You can get it at plus odds. Naheem Hines had five catches in the first game last year against the Titans, eight in the second game against the Titans last year. He had six last week against the Seahawks. And the over-under is set at three and a half. And if Wentz is feeling the pressure in the pocket, I think he's going to try to get rid of the ball because both ankles are beat up. He sprained both ankles last week. So I think he's going to try to go to a safety valve in Naheem Hines a lot. Over three and a half. Yep. Over three and a half receptions. That is the prop that I like the most. Okay. I like that one. Um. We'll have Colts Titans in cash or trash. Mm-hmm. We will have that in cash or trash. We also have a Tennessee Florida bet in cash or trash. That's coming up on the other side. We have an abbreviated show here this evening on the money line. The Nashville Sounds and Columbus Clippers will be getting underway at 7.05 tonight with pregame starting at 6.50 with Jeff Hem on the call right here on ESPN 1025 The Game. So we have a little bit of an abbreviated show here tonight, but on the other side, it is cash or trash. That's next. He's Chase McCabe. I'm Ryan Porth, and you're listening to ESPN 1025 The Game. Welcome back in to the Money Line, ESPN 1025 The Game in the Game National App and YouTube. Chase McCabe, Ryan Porth here with you on this Friday evening, as we are every Friday at 6 o'clock, talking all things sports betting, going into the big football weekend. And Chase, cash or trash, last week I went 5-0 and oh mm. on cash or trash. You trashed two of my picks, so you went 3-2. and two. On the season, I am 11 and four on my cash or trash picks, and you are six and nine. So, a not so nice. n- not so nice record there uh, for Chase McCabe here in cash or trash. All right, let's start in the swamp tomorrow night, Tennessee at Florida. The Gators are 18 and a half point favorites in this game. I'm not necessarily looking at that. I've line, seen 19. Though. I mean, it was at 20 earlier in the week, so it's fading back a little towards Tennessee. I'm taking Tennessee plus 10 and a half in the first half. Tennessee plus 10 and a half in the first half. Here's why. Florida had that late comeback in the second half against Alabama last week. They, They made it close. They almost upset number one Alabama. They came up short. You also have the post Bama effect Mm -hmm. where Florida might be a little sluggish. Tennessee is going in with nothing to lose in Josh Heupel's first game against the Gators. I think Tennessee at least makes it interesting in the first half and they cover the 10 and a half point spread in the first half chase. Is that cash or is it trash? Yeah. And you don't know what Richardson's going to be either. If he's available, it sounds like it's going to be, but you don't know what he's going to be uh, for Florida. Yeah, I think that's cash money, man, because um, I really like that. I could see Florida potentially pulling away. I, I'll say this. I like the 18 and a half or the 19 for the entire game. I, I just I have a feeling that Tennessee covers this one, um, but especially in the first half, I think that's a good bet. All right. So we are one for one on cash picks. Number two for cash or trash. It's a game that you are going to be um, hosting Chasers Tailgate for at Mellow Mushroom on Broadway. So that should be a lot of fun tomorrow at 2.30. It will be during the Arkansas-Texas A&M game. That is the highlighted CBS game. How far is Tennessee Florida falling if they aren't the 2.30 game on CBS? Uh, Arkansas against Texas A&M at Jerry's World. The spread is... Anywhere from four and a half to five and a half, just like the Titans game, depending on the book that you look at. Since this is going to be a close game, I think that spread is a little too much. So I side with Arkansas, but the pick that I like the most out of this is the under 47. The under 47 for Arkansas versus Texas A&M. Both defenses are very good. I think this is going to be one of those intense, low-scoring games, especially because Texas A&M has a backup quarterback in there. 47 is a lower number for college, but I'm taking the under on it for A&M versus Arkansas tomorrow. Chase, cash, or trash? So Arkansas is my silly underdog pick, just so you know. Um, I do believe that 
at uh, Mellow Mushroom tomorrow. I will be calling the pigs. But <laughs> um, maybe on a pizza. There you but, go. Um, Ryan, life's too short to bet the under. <laughs> Trash. I like you're, the over. You're I going like over. I like All right. I, um, I think it's going to be close, but I like the over. So the one thing that scares me about the under is that these games can get a little crazy sometimes yeah. between Texas A&M and Arkansas. Neutral site. I, I would stay away from the under if Haynes King was still the starter for Texas A&M, but he's out with an injury. So I am going to lean with the under for A&M and Arkansas. All right. Number Barry's three. going to be clapping for the, for the hogs. Yes, he will. Number three, cash or trash. We are headed to Nissan stadium on Sunday afternoon, the Titans and the Colts. I have a feeling you're going to trash this one as well, but I can't, I can't figure out the line four and a half, five and a half. I understand the Titans should win this game, but we all know the Colts have the Titans number in this stadium. The Colts have won eight of the last nine in Nashville. So under 48 and a half. Here's why the only way the Colts can win this game is if it's low scoring. That is the only way. And I feel like they're going to try to get Jonathan Taylor, the rock a lot. They're going to try to live off of that run game in the offensive line and keep the ball out of Ryan Tannehill's hands. Now the over is 21, six and one in the 28 starts for the Titans with Ryan Tannehill. But I'm leaning under on this one, 48 and a half. I think this is one of those 24, 20 or 24, 17 type games, cash or trash. Mm, well, uh, the last three games for Derrick Henry against the Colts, he's gone over a hundred yards. Two of those were on the road. And we've talked about that, you know, at home, uh, he, he typically is, uh, gets less yards at home than he does on the road. But I think that the big truck is going. I think uh, he's fired up after last week. You're going to see more of that. I think whether Wentz plays or not, um, it's not really going to matter because he's he's average on a good day. And, you know, if he's limited and he's playing, then what does that mean? It's tough, but I actually think I'm going to say cash. And I know that does surprise you, but I think it. I think you're right. Darren said today on Darren Donica chase, and I, I think I agree with him. He thinks the Titans win by 10 or more, but I, I think, so I think they cover, but you're right. I think it's under that, that 48. Okay. Well, I hope you and Darren are right that this is easier. The Titans fan of me, just we've seen this movie before where the Titans should beat the Colts at home and they don't. All right. The number no. four cash or trash two desperate teams in Minneapolis tomorrow or Sunday Seahawks Vikings. I am hammering the over 55 in this game. You've got two desperate teams. You've got two average defenses and you've got two offenses that can put up points. So I'm going over 55. This just reeks of a 34 to 30 type of game between the Seahawks and the Vikings. I don't really know who's going to win. I lean Seahawks, but I lean heavier towards the over 55 Seahawks Vikings cash or trash. Oh, I would take the Seahawks. I, I'm not a believer in the Vikings at all. And I, I do like the Seahawks last week was a close game. I don't think that really defines anything of what they are as a team, but I agree with you. That is a cash uh, going to be a high scoring game. Russ and company they're they're going to be pissed off for greatness. So um, I think a lot of points get put up on both sides. So I would take that over. All right. Uh, the final one for cash or trash is the national game in the late afternoon window. And that is the Buccaneers at the Rams. Ooh, Th this is going to be a great game at SoFi, a potential NFC championship preview in week three uh, between Tom Brady and the Bucks and Matthew Stafford and the Rams. I'm going with the Bucks, the Bucks money line. That is my pick in this game. I, Tampa Bay opened as the slight underdog. As we get closer to the weekend, they are now the slight favorite. I don't think Tom Brady is really going to be looking ahead to his, his marquee showdown against the Patriots in Foxborough next weekend. And Tom Brady 
has looked like he's 24 years old and not 44 so far this season. Tom Brady has been magnificent, and the Rams' defense has looked vulnerable. While talented, they look vulnerable. I think the Bucs go on the road and get a win at the Rams. Bucks money line, that is my pick for that game. Chase, is that cash or trash? That is trash. I like Ooh. the Rams. I love the Rams. I love that point and a half that they're now getting. Um, this is going to be interesting because uh, you got the goat and Tom Brady going against Matthew Stafford. These two have not faced each other all that much in their careers, just because Brady was in the AFC for most of his and Stafford of course has been in the NFC with Detroit uh, until this year now with the Rams, but it's at home. I, I am, a, I am drinking the Rams Kool-Aid. I am all about them. Um, so yeah, no, I'm going to, I'm going to disagree with you and hmm. say that is trash. Um, because I, and I'm also excited to see Brady versus Stafford. I think, um, I think that that's going to be fun. So well, I think I, Brady's I, beaten Stafford and everything, every time they met in their career, which isn't much, but, um, three or four times, maybe. Well, I'll tell you what a triple header, at least for me. Titans Colts at noon, Bucks Rams at 325 and Packers Niners on Sunday night football. That's one heck of a trio coming Packers up. Packers are Sunday. dogs too. They're I like know. dogs on the road. Well, do one of us have the Packers as our dogs of the week? We'll get to that. Find out. Next, we've got our locks of the week. We've got our dogs of the week. We are still perfect with our dogs of the week. Both of us are still 3-0 and this football season. We will both try to make it 4-0. and On the other side, it is the money line. I'm Ryan Porth. He's Chase McCabe. You're listening on ESPN 102.5 The Game and watching on YouTube. The money line rolls right along here on ESPN 102.5 The Game and the Game National App and on YouTube. Ryan Porth, Chase McCabe here with you. Sounds baseball coming up at 650 as they host the Columbus Clippers tonight at First Horizon Park. Chase, for our viewers on YouTube, they will see me wearing a Nashville SC hat. And Nashville SC just keeps winning. They won last night yeah. against uh, Miami or Wednesday night against Miami. Nashville SC is now plus 950 to win the MLS Cup. I feel like those are pretty good odds for a team that is in second place in the Eastern Conference and firing on all on all cylinders here in the second half of the season. I think that's those are very good odds. So those odds are on FanDuel. If you are interested, you can check those out. Uh, but Nashville SC uh, rolling. They play again Sunday with coverage at 11:45 on ESPN 94.9. All right, our locks of the week and our dogs of the week. Chase, where do we want to start? Uh, let's start, let's start with dogs of the week. All right. We will go with dogs of the week. The two of us both had Michigan state last week and they obliterated Miami. Now with our dogs of the week, they're an underdog. We think they might win, but we feel strongly that they will at least cover. Mm -hmm. We are both three and O with college teams so far this season. Are you chase McCabe sticking with college? Or are you going with NFL? I am sticking with college. All um, right. So I think that there's kind of a theme here on Saturday that dogs are going to be barking in the state of Texas. And you think about some of the matchups you have Arkansas taking on Texas A&M at Jerry's world. I've already mentioned Arkansas was my silly underdog pick, but then you have uh, Texas and Texas tech that are playing each other as well. TCU SMU. And, and there's some intriguing matchups there, but the one I'm going with, I know where you're going. The Baylor bears plus seven against Iowa state Baylor off to a three and O start had a, a very good start to the season. I know a lot of people were sleeping on Baylor and they're still trying to see, are they for real? Or is this just a good start? This will be a, a big test for them going on the road at Iowa state, but I like, I like taking the seven. I think this is a close game. So that's my dog of the week. Well, this game is actually in Baylor or it's at Baylor. It is at Baylor. I like that pick chase. Uh, yeah. I've got, look, I had like 10 college teams listed as potential dogs for this segment. Like I like a lot more dogs this week than I like favorites. I knew it was at Baylor. I don't know why I said that. Um, yeah. 
plus Iowa State is just overrated. Overrated. They we are. knew it going into the season. Uh, so I, I I do like that Baylor pick. I am yeah. staying in the Big 12. My dad always said, I love a home dog. Yep. Love the home dog. I'm staying in the Big 12. I'm going with the road dog. Give me Kansas State plus six and a half at Oklahoma State. Kansas State is a good team. Hmm. Kansas State is perfect on the year. Yes, they've lost their starting quarterback, um, but they still thumped Nevada last week at home by three touchdowns. Deuce Vaughn is a dynamic running back for Kansas State, and I don't really think Oklahoma State is all that good. Spencer Sanders has not panned out as their quarterback. Oklahoma State won by one point on the road at Boise last week, but they've struggled at home so far this season. I believe in their three wins, they're also 3-0, and but in their three wins, it's been a combined 13 points that they won by. So Oklahoma State has been playing with fire. I think they lose this week straight up against Kansas State. Kansas State is my dog of the week. Okay. Okay. Plus, I think the line six and a half is a little high for a game that's probably going to be in the low 20s for both team, both teams. I don't think this is going to be a shootout uh, like you typically see in the Big 12. Yeah, I don't either. So, uh, I mean, I was also considering Baylor. I was also considering Western Kentucky at home against Indiana. Also considering Utah State at home against Boise State. Also considering Notre Dame. I was looking at Notre Dame heavy. N- neutral site against Wisconsin. I mean, well, neutral, neutral, but Chicago is Notre Dame land. So like, yeah. they're playing at Soldier Field. That's kind of going to be a home game for Notre Dame. I kind of, do you feel like the, the wrong team's favored? I mean, I know Notre Dame hasn't been that impressive. I get it. They, they've won, but they've struggled to win. But at least closer, I guess. I, is- I, I thought it was going to be a three-point spread. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would take the Irish there. Um, I like Kent State at Maryland, UAB at Tulane. Like, there are a lot of dogs in college football that I like. Uh, I tease the Packers at Niners. I don't like the Packers in San Francisco. Short week. No? They don't match up well against San Francisco. Um, I, I know a lot of people like the Packers. That's probably where the public money is going to go. They would not be one of my dogs of the week. You already said you liked Western. I like Western at home against Indiana. I think Indiana's overrated. They're one of the most overrated teams in college football. Cincinnati, uh, believe outscored them 38 to 10 after mm-hmm. falling down 14 nothing to them last week. Yeah, I'm glad I'm glad some people thought that Cincinnati wasn't a good team and they were overrated when yeah. they're losing at half. So that like, kind of looks like Cincinnati does belong. Uh yeah. some people don't think so, but I think they do. They do. Uh I'll be at South Bend next weekend, by the way. Cincinnati at Notre Dame. Right. That should be fun. Uh, all right, let's get to our locks of the week to close out the show. Sounds baseball coming up at six 50 locks of the week. Chase, you are 16 and five last week. You got yours Memphis plus three and a half at home against Mississippi state M- Memphis one straight up. Um, so who are you going with as your lock of the week this week? So I was torn between two games, um, because the, one of the sexy picks last week, and it turned out to be a, a good one was Michigan state over Miami, Michigan state winning outright, uh, getting six and a half going into that game. Now everybody is all of a sudden looking at Michigan state and they're going, Oh, okay. They're for real. And I do think they're for real. They're hosting Nebraska. So I looked at that one, but my lock of the week is in the sec. And this is another one that uh, was, that came up on silly underdog picks. And I disagree with it. I think Kentucky is a pretty darn good football team. They are laying five points against South Carolina on the road. South Carolina, I think people see that plus five. I'll take it. Oh, they're going to get, they're going to win. They're not going to win. I actually think Kentucky's got a shot to beat Florida when they play. So I like the Wildcats uh, minus five. So Michelle, if you're listening, I hope it's a good catter day. I thought this spread was going to be closer to double digits for. Kentucky. I thought so too, and I'm surprised it hasn't moved. I know it's, it's been sitting at five all week long. And Levis, Levis is for real. So, I, I, I like. I, it's going to be a good day. I, I Kentucky. I feel like that was a little bit of an overreaction by Vegas to Kentucky kind of sleepwalking against UTC last week. Yeah. So, all right. 
I might tell you on that one. Uh, speaking of an overreaction to a game last week. So Georgia Tech almost beat Clemson. Clemson does not look very good. Yeah. Um, Losing to game, Lawrence, they'll do that. Yeah. Talk about a game that I am not touching whatsoever is Clemson NC State. Nope. Uh, a game that you can hear, by the way, on 1025 the game tomorrow starting at two. I don't think North Carolina is favored enough against Georgia Tech. This game is at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta. So it's technically a neutral site game. So I think that's a that is less of a home advantage for Georgia Tech. North Carolina is laying 12 and a half. North Carolina can put up points. Georgia Tech cannot. And I think North Carolina, people are overlooking them now after the week one letdown at Virginia Tech. Give me North Carolina. Give me Sam Howell to hit up Josh Downs all night long. UNC minus 12 and a half against Georgia Tech. That is my lock. Hmm. I actually, I was looking at that. I think that's a good lock. I think that's solid. So going UNC, uh, I need a bounce back after last week. I had Texans team total under 17 and a half. And the Texans, I should have taken that last night Mm -hmm. and not last week. But well, and in UNC, after you know they kind of struggled out of the gates now that it seems like mac brown has it all figured out so i i think that's gonna i think that's gonna hit they've scored 59 in each of the last two weeks yeah they're they're back to form they just beat virginia by what 20 25 points so i think unc rolls tomorrow night against georgia tech speaking of rolling we got to roll out of here we're gonna roll and get ready for nashville sounds baseball as they take on columbus tonight at first horizon park Chase, it was fun as always. Yeah, fun for sure. And we uh, hand the baton off to Jeff Hem now. We do. For Chase McCabe, I'm Ryan Porth. Thank you so much for listening to The Money Line. Up next, it is Nashville Sounds Baseball right here on ESPN 1025 The Game.